Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. You are welcome to today's um, Sunday service, which is the last Sunday in the month of June. I pray. As you have come to worship the Lord this morning, that at the end of the program, our life will never remain the same in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Our dear Father, we thank you this morning. We appreciate you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the grace you have bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord, for everything you have done. Father, be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have come, O oh God, to learn under your feet this morning. Father, Lord, let our heaven be open in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord, as we pray, as we praise you, Father, Lord, let our prayers, our praises be acceptable by you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everlasting Father. Amen. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we want to quickly go through our open heaven. And the topic for today is who do you pray to who do you direct your prayer to our memory verse is taken from the book of psalm psalm 5 verse 2 wherefore seeing we are also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin in which dwell so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us our bible reading is taken from the, uh, psalm 5 verse 1 to 3 give ear to my words O lord consider my meditation hearken unto the voice of my cry my king and my god for unto thee will i pray for unto thee will i pray verse 3 my voice shall thou hear in the morning O lord in the morning will i direct my prayer unto thee and will look up unto thee our topic once again is who do you pray to who do you direct your request to Whenever you are passing through one challenge or the other, or even when things are going nowhere, who do you direct your prayer to? The message. The psalmist in our memory verse for today made a great discovery. He found that prayer is very important to everyone who wants to be victorious in life. Not only that the person in whom we can channel our prayers is even more important. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That who we channel our prayer to, our request, our meditation to is very, very important. If we want to be victorious in life, if we want to be great in life, if we want to receive the abundant blessing in life, you should be able to identify the right person to direct your prayer to. In 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 26 to 27. We see a woman who misdirected a prayer to the king of Israel when she was in distress. Thank God the king was wise. He directed her focus to the Lord. We must channel our prayers to the right person. No wonder. Psalm 3, Psalm 5, verse 3 says, In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and I will look up. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you direct your request or your prayer to your neighbor, be expected nothing. If you direct your prayer to hard work, if you direct your meditation or your focus on what you can do best, you should be expecting little to nothing. Praise the Lord. Amen. But if you focus on the Lord who give life, who knows everything about you before you were given birth to? You should be able to know that. As we see in the place that I just mentioned, Second King, when that woman directed a prayer to the king, but king said, no, if this poor woman, you know, continue to bother me, 
I think God is also here to give answer to us. I pray we will not be misled in the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 18 verse 1 to 8 paint a true pictures of where we should direct our prayers. Only God knows how long it took the judge to pay attention to the helpless widow. The judge said that this woman has been coming to my house day in, day out. If I don't give what she wants or what she requested for, for eventually she may wear everything out in my house. Who knows for how long? Is it one month? Instead of you to just pray that prayer under five minutes to the right person. And God is always there to answer. I pray God will answer all our prayers this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. However, she didn't relate in action. Jesus Christ said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he be alone with them? It, it had it that I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He assures us that God will avenge them easily, speedily. That is, God will answer all our prayers and meditations speedily in the name of Jesus. Amen. So the lesson we should draw from this is that. And the woman directed her prayers to God, she would not have suffered from the insensitivities of the judge for long. We should, however, also learn persistence from this widow. She continued to disturb the judge. She continued without, you know, relent. She continued requesting from the judge, you must avenge. You must avenge for me. The Lord, to whom are you directing your prayers? If it is your pastor, despite the fact that he is God's representative, you are missing it. You should not direct your prayer to pastor. You should not even wait for your pastor before you communicate to your father. A lot of Christians these days cannot even pray to God. But they must see their pastor so that pastor can help them to pray to God. No! That is not what the Bible is telling us. We have free access to God, our Creator. We can always, at any time, any day, anywhere, call upon Him. And we surely give us answer. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Seeking solution from people rather than God lead to disappointment. Even you yourself can disappoint yourself. Let the law put your trust in someone else. Or put your trust in your spouse. Or put your trust in your brother. I have had this discussion several times. If your relatives are very rich, that doesn't guarantee you that they will help you. That doesn't guarantee you that they will transfer which amount of money to you. They can only be giving you little change. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But the only thing you can benefit from such people is that they will not come and beg you for money. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So if you depend on human, if you depend on your fellow human being or fellow Christian, you can be disappointed. It's only God who will never disappoint his loved ones. Mm -hmm. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 17, chapter 5, verse 5, 6. Thus says the Lord, Cause be the man that trusted the man, mm -hmm. and make a flesh his arm, mm -hmm. and whose heart departed from the Lord. You need to put your trust in the Almighty God, who gives liberally without upbraiding, He will definitely help us in the name of Amen. Jesus. Like I said, you yourself can disappoint yourself. You should not trust in anyone. So when people are around you disappoint you, it is necessary. It is must. It can always come at any time. I pray God will help us and we will continue to answer our prayer in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Call upon the name of the Lord this morning. Say, God, help me. Help me, Lord, to always direct my, my, my mind, my prayers, 
my meditation unto you alone in the name of Jesus. Tell God, tell God, if you have been trusting in man, it is time, it is right time you directed your prayer. You need to rechannel your prayer to God. Tell God that God help me, Lord, to always trust in you in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray help us this morning, Lord, to always direct our trust to you. Help us in shame to be help us, Lord, to worship your name, Lord, to lift our eyes, Lord, to be exalted, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. In Lord God, from the beginning to the end, there is no place for hiding man. You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. And so our righteous Father. We declare this morning that you are God over our lives from the beginning to the end. Even in the middle, you are God. You are God of all. You are God by yourself. No one can throne you and no one can dethrone you. We worship you this morning. We thank you for the three we like to see the last Sunday in the month of June. It can only be you. No arms of flesh can sustain us to this level. None of our wisdom sustain us to this level. It's by your strength, it's by your power, it's by your might. Mm -hmm. Father, we return all glory back to you. Be that exalted in the name of Amen. Jesus. Father, as we want to go into your word, Holy Spirit, you are the greatest teacher. Please come and teach us this morning in the name of Amen. Jesus. And we pray, let this word grow in our hearts. Let it reform us, let it transform us, Amen. so that we become like Christ Amen. Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are all welcome to the presence of God this morning. We bless the name of the Lord. The Lord has been so good to us. And today uh, we'll be looking at a topic that says self-cleansing, self-cleansing. Last week uh, our topic was beware of dogs and there we learn the description of dogs that is they are the evil doers, deceitful people, unfaithful people. The, the God, the Bible regards them as dogs, lazy people, greedy people. They are all dogs, all the worker of flesh, of iniquities. And the word of God encourages us last week that we need to be careful of them. No, they are not exempted in the household of God. Because you'll find that even in the church, you find all kind of behavior there. But the word of God for genuine child of God is beware of them. Because the Bible makes us to understand that the ties and the wits they'll be growing together. But God is a righteous judge. He is the one that knows how to separate them. So that was what uh, we did last week. This week we will be proceeding on self-cleansing. Hallelujah. Self-cleansing. And our text is from Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19 to 23. Hebrews 19. Hebrews 10 rather. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19 to 23. And it says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through, through the curtain, that is, his body. And since we have a great place over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, that, that faith brings, having our heart sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our body washed with pure water hallelujah Amen. so the blood of jesus the death of our lord jesus christ has paved the way the the cutting has been removed the veil has been removed and because it, it has through his blood he has entered as the high priest and so too we have the same confidence to enter the presence of God, the most holy place, through his blood. Hallelujah. Amen. In that text we read also, we will understand that he opened the curtain, the veil for us. 
when his body was passed and the blood was gushing out what he was doing he was fulfilling the requirements that of, of sin he was carrying all our sins so that we will be free from that guilt so he make us to come nearer to god with a sincere act now and also there is no more guilt no more guilt conscience no more because once you are washed with the blood of jesus nothing can stand against you no legal ground devil can use against you also we can hold family to the hope that we now believe and because we know he that promised is faithful to keep to his word so we need self-cleansing self-cleansing is very important and this is the aspect this is what we have to do god has done what he needs to do we also have to do what we need to do our memory verse is second corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. The Bible says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. The word of God says, let us. So it's not let God. Let you and me cleanse ourselves from every form of filthiness. And filthiness can come in the flesh. It can also come in the spirit where you decided to be disobeying the Holy Spirit. When you decide to be rebelling against his instruction, it means you, 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 you are accumulating debt. It's our duty to be cleansed from all these things. Our introduction says, God's desire is that his people will be clean outwardly and inwardly. Both outwardly and inwardly, God wants us to be clean. If we turn to Zechariah chapter 3 verse 4, it was talking about the high priest, the high priest Joshua. You know, despite that he was the high priest, still there was filthiness in his life. He was clothed in garment of filthiness. And before he could approach the presence of God, the angel said what? Take off the filthy robe. The filthy robe has to be taken. No one can approach the presence of God with filthiness. There is no way. This part that God loves every one of us, but when sin is there, that sin has become a barrier. So the high priest has to Joshua has to take off the filthy robe. And today the word of God is telling us also that we need to take that filthy behavior, that filthy attitude that is in us, that is not allowing God to have his full access in us. He loves those whose hearts and lives are perfect towards him and that has made adequate provision for their all around cleansing so is that cleansing aspect of it is, is what we need to do though is the holy spirit that will cleanse us but we must be longing there must be a desire for us to be cleansed if we are not desiring the way of righteousness there is no way Holy Ghost will work it in us even that desire healing aspect is the holy spirit that make us to desire Remember the word of God says is in that make us to do and to will according to his good purpose. So anyone that must come to God is God that is drawing them. So if there is a drawing towards God, just know that is the Holy Spirit that is showing, expressing his love, wanting you to come closer. So you too, you must respond and go to it. And the same thing happened with David. We can see this in David's prayer in Psalm 15. 1 verse 7. David said, Cleanse me with ipso, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. You know, in the olden days, the high, the high priest, you know, when one committed sin and you went to the high priest, you, you, are, you go to the high priest for forgiveness of sin, they will take ipso. Ipso is like a, a, a leaves. They will put it together. So, is that leaf they will dip in the blood of the animal that you brought? They will dip the leaf in the blood and they will sprinkle it on you. And the same thing, Christ Jesus has done it for us. He is, He has sprinkled the blood remember hebrews chapter 12 talks about the blood of our lord jesus christ the sprinkling of blood that we have come to the sprinkling of blood that speak better words than the blood of abel so christ jesus has done the same thing for us here david was saying lord cleanse me with axe and i will be clean wash me and i'll be whiter than snow is only the blood of jesus that can wash guilt away is only the blood of jesus that can wash sin away no matter how dirty you have gone no matter how filthy you are 
once you are ready to turn to the Lord, He's ready to accept you. And I pray that Lord will help every one of us as we do so in Jesus' name. Amen. So as usual, we have two outlines. The first one we'll be looking at self-cleansing and its benefits. What is self-cleansing and its benefits? Then after that, we'll proceed on how can a man cleanse himself. How can a man cleanse himself? So let's start with the definition of self-cleansing. Self-cleansing is a conscious and deceitful effort by an individual to purge self from all form of filthiness through the Holy Spirit in order to become acceptable to God. It is a conscious and a deceptive effort. You decide it. It's not something that happened by chance. It's not something that happened by, oh, just doing whatever you like. No, you need to make a conscious effort. You need to make the conscious effort to approach God, to walk in the way of the Lord. And as you are doing this, to forsake every form of filthiness. As you are doing this, you discover that that self-consciousness is not only empowered by you, but is backed up by the Holy Spirit. So that is what we can call uh, self-cleansing. And in our memory verse today, 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 1, verse 7, we can see that this is very important. God wants us to be free from filthiness that corrupt both the flesh and the spirit. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a question for us today. What does the word of God say on cleansing exercise? What does the word of God say? And we'll look at Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. The Bible says, do not conform to the pattern of the world, of this world, rather, but be transformed by renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God's will is. And what are the God's wills? That it is good, pleasing, and perfect will. That, that verse is, is really loaded. Because the first step is do not conform to the pattern. So there is a pattern in this world. There is a pattern in Babylon. There is a pattern in Babylon that is different from in Mosiah. So we must not align. That, that means that it's tendency for us to go in that pattern. To go in that pattern is more easier. But God is telling us we should not conform. And the only way we cannot conform is when we renew our mind. So if you don't renew your mind, you just leave your mind, everything goes, whatever that goes around, enter your mind, you discover that gradually you'll be conformed to the pattern. But when you renew your mind regularly, then you're able to avoid the pattern of this world. And the only thing that can renew our mind is God's words. Everything starts from the thoughts. Is when God fills our heart, when it fills our thoughts, then our mind will be renewed. It's after our mind is renewed that we cannot approve the will of God. We can test and approve the will of God. We can say, oh, this is a good will. This is a perfect will. Then we can walk in it. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So the word of God reveal our true person to us. It renew our mind. The word of God also renew it. It renew it renews our thoughts. You discover that if you study the word of God most of the time, all those filthy thoughts will be far away from you. But any time, maybe some days there that you left the word of God behind, you will discover that all manner of evil thoughts. That is when you can easily get provoked anymore. Someone can even say annoying word that you are ready to fight back. But when you renew all the time, all these things will not happen. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 1 verse 16 also Isaiah 1 verse 16 if you are there you can help me to read Isaiah chapter 1 verse 16 okay let me read from this place it says wash and make yourself clean take your evil deed out of my sight stop doing wrong wash and make yourself clean take your evil deeds out of my sight stop doing wrong that is the word of God he wants us to be pure. He wants us to be clean. So Isaiah chapter 1 verse 16 gave, gave some instruction on self-cleansing. And this instruction is that you need to wash yourself. Cleanse yourself. Put away evil. Cease from doing evil. So let's look at Jeremiah chapter 4 also verse 14. Jeremiah chapter 4 
verse 14. What, are, what instruction did Jeremiah 4, 14 give us on self-cleansing? When you turn to Jeremiah 4, 14, you will learn that the word of God also says that to wash your heart from wickedness and evil thoughts. No, for the root of all evil, the root of all atrocity in any society, it starts from thought. That is the foundation. That is why the word of God really tells us that we should be on guide. We should be careful about our hearts. Because out of it is a wide spring of life. We need to guide our heart, our thoughts, what you meditate on. When you are not, when you are not occupied, what do you think about? Jeremiah 4 verse 14 makes us, he say, wash your heart from wickedness. And what is wickedness? What is evil thought? Is when God is not in your thought. When you turn to Psalm, Psalm 10 verse 4, Psalm 10 verse 4 talks about the wicked. He said God is not in their thoughts. Everything they are doing, they don't consider God. God. It's all about myself, me and I. So we need to be careful. We need to wash ourselves. Then another question is, uh, Apostle Paul directs believers to keep their physical bodies from two works of flesh. What are they? When we look at that second Corinthians that we read this morning, Apostle Paul tells us that we need to keep ourselves from sin and lust. Sin is the action when you have done it, and lust is when it's still within your thoughts. When you are still ruminating upon it, it's, it's still being prepared. So Apostle Paul warned all believers for us to be pure, for us to be clean both outwardly and inwardly, we need to avoid sin, run away from it, and lust. What did the following Bible uh, verses say? The second Corinthians, uh, second uh, Timothy chapter two, verse twenty-one. Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty-one. We know that is where God is saying that we should purge ourselves. That if any man, if if, if, if anyone purge himself from these, we listed all the evil, the the, 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 the the works of the flesh. He said he will be fit for the master's use. So master cannot use any vessel. You, ca you cannot use a filthy vessel. It's not possible. So 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 21 makes us that the person becomes sanctified and become useful to God. When you pour yourself, you become sanctified. It was then, it, it will be after that, that God can use you. 1 John chapter 3 verse 3 also says, It assures believers of eternal life with the Savior Jesus Christ. When you are sanctified, you know for sure that you are going to reign with him. Look at uh, uh, Apostle Paul as an example. I love that man so much. He's so sure of where he's going. Towards the end of his days on earth, he knew. He said, crown has been set ahead for me. I know where I'm going. He said, to live is Christ, to die is gain. So we need to, you cannot say that you are a child of God and you don't know your destination. You will know it. But if you are living in filthiness, you know, you too, you will know that, no, my destination is not heaven. So we need to sanctify ourselves so that we can be with Christ at the end. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22. That uh, verse uh, is, is part of the text we read this morning. It says, self-cleansing give believer confidence to come to God's presence in faith. When you have sanctified yourself, you can approach the presence of God. You know, you, you can profess the faith that you have. You can confess, you can shut it on mountain top. It gives us confidence to approach the presence of God. Precious people of God, we need to know that if a person has death in his life, he cannot approach the throne of God. If you are living in filthiness, in as much that God loves every one of us, He wants us to be with Him. He wants us to reign with Him. He wants us to have dominion. But once there is filthiness, there is sin in it, there is no way. So let's quickly go to our second outline. How can a man cleanse himself? We have seen the, the meaning of self-cleansing and its benefits. Then how can we proceed? How can we do this? The first thing we need to know is that for us to cleanse ourselves, we need to ask Lord Jesus to cleanse us from every impurity of sin through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I would like us to read Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14 and verse 22. Hebrews 9, if you are there you can hear. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. How can a person cleanse himself to be acceptable to God? Hebrews 9, 14. 
Okay, let me read. How much more then will the blood of Jesus, who through eternal spirit, offer himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience mm -hmm. from the earth that leads to death, so that we may serve the living God? Verse 22 says, In fact, the law required that nearly everything be cleansed with the blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So we know that it's only the blood of Jesus that cleanses. No other blood can. You cannot say you want to clean yourself by okay, of doing good things, observing rights and norms. No, it's only the blood of Jesus that can clean. And also allow the word of God to transform the area of your life which are not pleasing to God. The word of God is a pure water. It cleanses. Jesus was talking about the disciples. I said, you have been sanctified. Mm -hmm. You have been cleansed by the word. So the word of God sanctifies and cleanses. So any area of your life that you are still having one challenge or the other, mm -hmm. allow the word of God to transform it. And this, the, this answer also mm -hmm. is found um, in Psalm 119. Psalm 119 verse 9. The Bible says, How can a young man purify his way, make his way clean? And David answered the question. He said, By living according to your word. The word purify. People of God, there is no way we can escape sin in this world if we are not living according to the word. It's only the word that can make us to escape through. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, after confessing your sin, never go back to them again. You must make sure by the help of the Holy Spirit not to go back because there is tendency to fall back, to relapse like drug addicts. They get relapsed often and you discover that that relapse is even worse than the beginning. So we must make sure that we don't relapse because like what Jesus said, he said that when the devil leave a place, he will go to the desert and after a while he will come and check whether there is still room in that space he left. And he find the place empty, he will not come alone, he will go and look for his superiors. Several more and all together they will come and be living in that space. So we need to know that relapse is dangerous. Don't go back to the sin you have you have confessed. And, and the only way you can do that is to make to, to guide yourself. Make sure that you are in the midst of godly people. People that can shake you, people that can correct you as you are going, people that will not turn a blind eye on whatever you are doing. People when they see that you are walking in the wrong way, they can easily say, oh my brother, my sister, I notice this and that in you. I pray God will help us as we do so in Jesus' name. Amen. Avoid anything that is evil. When we see evil, we need to flee. We must not analyze it or use logic to back it up. You know, First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-two. First Thessalonians five twenty-two. The Bible says, "Reject every kind of evil, every kind." In fact, some people they are going to quantify and categorize evil and sin. They will say one is a smaller sin, one is a bigger sin. No, any form of evil is a robber. Is ready to rob us of our inheritance because the devil knows, Satan knows, the only way he can get access to our inheritance is to create division between us and our father. And so we need to run away from every form of evil. Avoid the deeds of the flesh or ungodly attitudes and behavior. People of God, we are looking at how can a man cleanse himself? Run away from evil, avoid the deeds of the flesh and ungodly attitude. Attitude are what we do daily, minute by minute, daily, weekly, monthly. They become our attitude. You need to check your attitude. In fact, as a Christian, we should find a time we do self-examination. If no one is examining you, sit down and examine yourself. Look at those attitudes that, are, that people are complaining about and work upon them. Amen. Amen. Colossians chapter 5, verse, verse chapter 3 rather, Colossians 3 verse 5, the Bible says, put to death every earthly nation, and it now started mentioning those earthly nations, the, 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 the evil desire, the lost sexual immorality, fornication, he said put to death, that is do not allow it to survive. They want to grow, they want to rule, they want to take charge, but God says put to death, so we need to put it to death. Another way how we can be cleansed, how can a man cleanse himself, is 
uh, to draw close to God in studying of the word of God. We need to draw closer to God. James chapter 4 verse 8 say, come near to me and I will come near to you. If you see that word, it doesn't say that God said I will come near to you first. No. It's you that you must desire to draw closer to God. Then God will draw closer to you. So, and this is by studying the word of God. And precious people of God, no most Christians nowadays, we study the word of God to fulfill our conscience that, oh, today I've studied the word of God. No, study the word of God till God speak to you, till you get direction for that day. Not just studying the word of God to, to feel good that, oh, today I've opened my Bible. I'm not in the category of those people that dust is resting on their Bible. No, study the word of God, get the direction for the day, pray. Pray, you know, most of the time, prayer is not about, oh, Lord, bless me. In the process of praying, God will definitely bless us. But it's a place of communion, a place of fellowshipping. God wants to fellowship with us. He wants to restore what happened in the Garden of Eden, that in the cool of the day, he has to come and fellowship with Adam and Eve. God is longing for that. And I pray God will help us to attain this, to do this regularly, consistently in the name of Jesus. Amen. We need to worship, fellowshipping. The Bible says we should not forsake the assembly of the God of the brethren. You no, know, when you fellowship with one another, that is where you will be encouraged. That is where your thoughts will be aligned with God. And there you will be able to see that iron will sharpen iron. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So these are the things uh, we have for us today. We are talking about self-cleansing. It is a desire of God that every of his child should be cleansed, should be purified so that we can ascend the throne of God. And we know that this self-cleansing has a lot of benefits. It makes us to have the boldness to enter God. And when we have boldness, we can ask him anything. And whatever we ask him, we know we will get it. So God will help us to attain this. And we have seen ways in, we, in which we can uh, cleanse ourselves in, in which we can sanctify ourselves is by the word of God by avoiding wrong uh, avoiding evils and avoiding flesh and ungodly attitudes I pray God will help us in Jesus name Amen. so in summary precious people of God God is a clean God God is clean always therefore believer must be cleansed we cannot say our father is pure and the children will be impure. No, something is not right. If we say God is holy, then we as children, we are the product of God. We need to be holy. God is always clean and we too have to be clean. In conclusion, God is looking for a clean and pure vessel. God is looking for a clean and pure vessel. The eyes of God is going to and fro on the earth looking unto those that their heart align with god are you among them do you want to join them god is waiting for you so god is still in the business of looking for clean vessels to use you can be available for his use by cleansing yourself so i want us to pray this morning we are going to cry to the lord that the lord should cleanse us he should cleanse us from within and without like david he said lord please me please me with hype so and i shall be white i shall be whiter than snow oh lord cleanse us oh lord search my heart oh lord people of god let's pray oh lord search my heart and see if there is any wicked way in me see if there is any offensive way in me and lead me to the way of salvation father we pray this morning cleanse us oh lord please my thoughts cleanse my mindset cleanse my mind my heart oh lord purify us lord jesus so that we can render an offering acceptable unto you in the mighty name of jesus father cleanse us this morning lord purify us in the mighty name of jesus Purify us in the name of Jesus. Purify us in the name of Jesus. Purify us in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your voice and say, Father, purify me. Let me experience your purification in the name of Jesus. Let me experience your purification in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, that the Lord offer a sacrifice acceptable by you. That I may offer a pleasing sacrifice unto you. Please me, Lord. We find in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we find in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Talk to God, talk to God that God should purify you. Speak to Him that God will purify you in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and just pray to God.
Ah, every of my double favor in the name of Jesus. I claim it now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I want you to cry to the Lord, say, Father, Father, I will hit the fruit of my labor. Come on, lift up your voice and begin to pray now. Lord, I will hit the fruit of my labor. In the name of Jesus. I don't know whether you are praying at all. I want you to pray to God. Say, Father, I will hit the fruit of my labor. In the name of Jesus. I will hit the fruit of my labor. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I will hit the fruit of my labor. Thank you, Father Lord Jehovah. We give you all the praise, Father. We magnify your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Everlasting Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for bringing us to your presence once again. We cry to you, Lord. Is there anything that we have done that has fallen short of your glory? Lord, have mercy on us in the name of Jesus. Father, we have come to your presence once again. Lord, we ask that, Lord, the benefit in your process will be released to us in the name of Jesus. Every enemy that has withheld our, our blessings, Lord, we command that we release them to ourselves in the mighty name of Jesus. Every of our blessings that has been held in the sky, in the sea, in the, in, on the ground, even upon the surface of the heart. Lord, we cry that we are releasing them now in the name of Jesus. As what, Lord, who will hit the fruit of our labor. Thank you, everlasting Father. We submit ourselves into your hands as we listen to your word. Lord, let the words not let us not just be here alone, Lord, but do us on your word. Thank you, Father, because you have answered our prayers. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's next time I we are welcome to church once again. Like we said, it's our last Sunday in the month of June. And we thank God it's our last Sunday of the first half of the year. We appreciate God for giving us the opportunity to be alive today. And I thank God for you and for me those of us that are listening to me the Lord that has kept you up to this moment we continually keep you in the name of Jesus I say the Lord that has kept you from this moment up to this moment we continue to keep you in the mighty name of Jesus so we want to continue in our series on the shepherd hallelujah praise the name of the Lord and we are now in part 13 of this series you see how good it is just a chapter of the Bible, and we are just in chapter. I mean, I mean, the series is on now in, ten, in the thirteenth version, and we still have a lot of things to deal with. Praise the name of the Lord. So we want to read from Psalm twenty-three. We want to read from verse one to verse four. Psalm twenty-three, verse one to verse four. Join me to read as we read together. The Bible says, Psalm twenty-three. Verse 1 to 4. Are you there? It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the sea waters. Are we there? Okay, let's continue. He restores my souls, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. So we've been talking about this precious psalm, this very, very important psalm. We've been looking at it. We've looked at who is the shepherd, who is the sheep. We've also dealt with what's the responsibility of the shepherd. And what's our own responsibility? We've said this scripture has a lot of metaphors, like green pastures, which means the word of I mean, a word of God. When we say He maketh us to lie down, it means that He maketh us to rest. We say when we He leadeth us, it means that He guides us. So we've been looking at this in extent. And if you have not, if you have not um, by any chance or by any chance you have missed any of this series, I. I beseech you, you should go to our Facebook channels and our YouTube channel. You will see these sermons in there. Praise the Lord. So last week, we talked about the valley. Hallelujah. We talked about the valley. And we said that every Christian, every child of God, we experience a valley. Hallelujah. Every child of God, we experience 
a valley. It is appointed for us that we will experience one way or the valley, one way or the other, a valley. And you know what? If you have not been to a valley, you are going to go to a valley. So every Christian is either going through a valley, in a valley, or just coming out of a valley. Now, we, we, we said, look, this valley is unpredictable. You cannot say this is the time when the valley is going to come. You cannot tell us, I mean, you can say, at this point in time, the valley will be like this. It's not, it, it's not something that you can tell about the extent of the valley. But one thing that we said, in conclusion of last week, is that there's a weapon that we have. And that is that whenever we are going through the valley, God is there. And remember I said, God of valley is the same as God of the mountain. Hallelujah. Amen. So this God is always there in the valley. Now look at what David now said in verse 4. I want to read it again. Verse 4. Say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You've explained that last week. He said, I will fear no evil. Say after me, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. Now, the very first thing that comes to your mind is that it means that there is evil. Hallelujah. For David to say, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Which means in the valley of the shadow of death, there are evil. There are evil there. So the psalmist David is looking at evil. Now the first question that you need to ask yourself is what is evil? Hallelujah. What exactly is evil? And a very simple answer to that, like I, I love the way our Father and the Lord used to define this kind of thing. The very good answer to ask and to answer what is evil is to know what is good. Right? Because good is the opposite of what? Evil. Now, what is actually good? And if you want to know what is good, you need to go to the beginning of the heart. The beginning of the creation. What does the Bible define as good? What does God define as good? In the beginning, after every creation that God did, what did the Bible say? He said, and God saw it, and it was what? Good. Hallelujah. So, what is good? Good are the creations of God. Everything that God created is what? Is good. Now, if good is the opposite of evil, or if evil is the opposite of good, then it then implies that anything that is not of the creation of God is what? Is evil. I don't know whether somebody is listening to me this morning. Anything that is not of the creation of God is what? Is evil. No, you know, God never created anything that is harmful. So in other words, anything that is harmful is what? Is evil. God never created anything that is injurious. In other words, anything that is injurious is what? Is evil. God never created anything that is disastrous. Anything that is disastrous is what? Is evil. Suffering is not part of God's creation. Take note of that. When God was creating things in the book of Genesis chapter 1, suffering was not part of what God created. And therefore, suffering is what? Evil. Anything that is morally bad is evil. Wickedness is what? Is evil. But what is David talking? What do you need to learn from this this morning? He says, even though there are many evils, even though there are many things that can constitute evil, I will not be afraid. Tell your neighbor, I will not be afraid. Say, I'm saying to you both, say, I will not be afraid. That is what David is saying this morning. Brethren, 
you know, evil has been designed in various ways in our generation. We've got a lot of things that constitute evil in this our current generation that we need to take note of. Sickness is evil because God did not create sickness. Come on, are you hearing me this one? I don't know whether you are getting me. Hallelujah. COVID-19 is evil. It's not the creation of God. Abuse, murder, adultery, fornication, robbery. They are evil. Terrorism. You know, God did not expect anyone to be without job. Job loss is evil. And sometimes, even during the early days, we see that there was government that are evil. And we are still seeing them today. Sickness, syndrome. All of these are evil. And because this evil abound in our heart, it makes us to be fear. You know, not even knowing tomorrow is evil. What is going to happen tomorrow? It brings fear to us. Everything that makes us to be fearful is what is evil. And what is the psalmist saying? The psalmist is telling each and every one of us. Don't be terrified. Don't live in fear. Because he knows that the devil tries. The devil is always happy when you and I are in fear. What does he do? He always wants to bring to us evil reports. I decree in the name that is above every other name. Every report that is not of God, every report that is of evil, I am by the grace of God combining my faith with yours this morning. And the green God is turning it into good news. In the mighty name of Jesus. The devil always wants you to get evil reports. He wants you to hear about your predicament. That's what he wants you to be seeing. He wants you to be seeing everything that is worse about you. This is not working. This is not happening. This is not happening. He doesn't want you to see the good side that God has created. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. What the devil wants is somebody that he will send to you with negative news. And you know what? It's come on nowadays. We are going to pray this morning. And God is our prayer to prayer. That God, God should turn every negative news. To good news, to positive news in your life. That is what the devil wants. I mean, for instance, look at Job in the scripture. Again, I'm pointing to him. Look at Job in the scripture. In Job chapter 1, verse 14 to 18. Job chapter 1 and verse 14 to 18. The news that they brought to Job was that all your donkeys have been killed. Hallelujah. All your sheep, even the ex men, have been killed. They didn't stop there. He said, Not only the ex men, even your servant has been killed. And not one thing about all this story. Every, I want you to read it when you get home. Job chapter 1, verse 14 to 18. Job 1, 14 to 18. All the story, you will see that the person that comes to report will say, I am the only one. That is late. I am the only one that is late. Or oh, your servant has been killed. I am the only one that survived it. Your sons and daughters have been killed. I am the only one. But do you know that in all of this, Job understands something. No matter the evil, no matter what is happening around me, that the devil is bringing as negative to me. I will fear no evil. Why was David saying this thing? Because
because he has taken the law as a shepherd. Remember where we started from? The law is my shepherd. Now, what does this tell us? You see, the shepherd has a confidence. I mean, the sheep rather has a confidence in the shepherd. So even if lion is coming, even if evil are coming, evil can be anything, it could be the weather, is assured that the shepherd will take good care of him. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Brother, like I said to you last week, when we were talking about the valley of the shadow of death, it doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter all the evil that is surrounding you. If you open the TV now, what you will hear? COVID situation is increasing. There is strike. This person is dying. There is this and it's happening. Corruption. Every evil thing is happening. But even amidst all this evil, when you make the Lord your shepherd, you will say, look, the, the, the unemployment rate is high. What the Lord, what the devil wants you to do is to be remembering. What am I going to eat tomorrow? How am I going to survive tomorrow? <laughs> By the time we finish verse 4 of this Psalm 23, you will understand very well. Because the Bible says in verse 5, said, Thou preparest a table before me. We're going to deal with that. Thou it is the Lord that gives it. Not about your intellect or anything. The Lord that does what that give it. And that's why David can say, Ye though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because he knows definitely that God, God is back. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor, God, God got my back. God. That's what Christ is saying. The devil wants to put fear. Many of you, you don't even know what is going to happen tomorrow. And that is making you to be fear, fearful rather. You see, this fear that we are talking about has many names. Some people call it phobia. Hallelujah. This fear that the devil wants to put into our heart, it has different names. Someone says fear, F-E-A-R, is False evidence approaching, appearing real. False evidence appearing real. That's what that's what the devil wants to put in our heart. Fear is the opposite of faith. Tell your neighbor, fear, fear. is the opposite of faith. It's the opposite of faith. What the devil wants to do to you is that fear. F E A R. Fear everything alone. That's what the devil wants you to believe. That when you fear, you want to fear everything and then run. Fear is a spirit. And it's a spirit that does what it permits. Fear is a spirit. And it's a spirit that torments. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17. Let's go there together. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 17. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 17. Let's see what God talks about fear. We're going to deal with this later. The Bible says, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17. Say, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. That is what the Lord has given us. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now even though all the fears that the devil wants to bring to us, there are fear that are good. That the fear of God is good. 
So when you fear God, you respect Him, you give reference to Him. But you see, the one that the devil wants us to concentrate on, which is very many in the world, it's over 700, is the one that is phobia. You know, I used to tell people that I'm afraid of heights. You don't know what? When I climb a bridge and I'm seeing the ground, I just focus. I don't like seeing ground from top. But over the times, when I started flying, that was when I was still young, I discovered that there's nothing to be afraid of. There are many of us who are afraid of tomorrow. We are afraid of what we are going to eat. There are many of us who are afraid. There are many things that we are afraid of. Many, many things. But one thing that you must know about fear is that it is damaging. Hallelujah. Fear is what? Damaging. It can damage you. How? Number one, fear can damage you physiologically. In other words, it can affect your thinking. Now, should I give you an example of what happens when you are afraid? The first thing that comes to your mind is to run, to flee, to take a flight. And when you do this, immune, your immune system goes down. So instead of you to think, it's your reflection reflex action that start taking over if they do anything you are not thinking about anything your body starts reacting immediately and when you start doing that you discover that your heart beats faster now a very good example is this and many of us who might not realize this very well some of us who are old when they say okay there's a work that I want to do and there's an interview that I want to do you might be confident for some time, but when you're about to start that university, you discover that your heart starts beating, you're afraid, you don't know the question that they want to ask you. Then you start thinking. Your thinking is not straight again. You still have, uh, uh, that can lead you to make irrational decisions. Praise the name of the Lord. So it can affect you physiologically. Fear can also keep you stuck and stagnant. Fear can keep you what? Stuck and stagnant. Fear can also limit progress and success. It can cause and aggravate diseases such as depression, stress, worry, and many other forms of diseases. In fact, fear is the mother of worry. And grandmother of stress. Do you hear what I said? Stress is the mother of what? Worry. And grandmother of stress. Many people are, are, are hooked on drugs today as a result of fear. A lot of people are afraid because they don't want to die, they don't want everything to do that, and they keep on taking drugs. And the most uh, the worst part of it is that fear makes you to forget. And as a Christian, what fear, what, what do you forget? Fear makes you to forget God. Makes you to forget God, makes you to forget His love over you, makes you to forget His mercy over you, makes you to forget His, His power over you. That's what fear does. But David understand this thing very well. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will do what? Fear. How do you overcome fear? How do you overcome fear? Number one, you overcome fear through faith in God. And faith in God means that you rest in the shepherd. You trust in the shepherd. You see, you cannot have faith and fear at the same time. Do you hear what I said? You cannot have faith 
and fear at the same time. It's either you have faith or you have faith. Now, Hebrews 11 verse 1, Hebrews 11 verse 1 defines faith as the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Now, what does this try to tell you? Faith will make you to believe God does only good as long as we live. Let me repeat that one. Faith will make you to believe that no matter what the situation, everything worked out for good for me. Hallelujah. No matter the evil that is around, what faith instigates is that everything will work out well for me. And that's why last week we, we, we ended it by saying, it is well with my soul. Hallelujah. What did we say? It is well with my soul. What does that tell you? No matter what we are going through, no matter the evil that is around us, it is well with our soul. That's faith. We are exercising faith. You see, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 16, Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 16, he said, look at what God said through Moses. He said, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and he might prove thee to do thee good at that later end. Whatever God is doing, faith is to get it to be good. May your faith show you goodness in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. So, like I said, faith makes you to believe that all things work out together for good. And for you to have faith, or for you to grow in faith, the Bible made us to understand that we should be praying in the Holy Ghost. You can read that in Jude chapter 20. Praying in the Holy Ghost. And hearing the word of God. So if you are seeing element of fear inside of you and you want to exercise faith, you need to start praying in the Holy Ghost and hearing the word of God. Romans chapter 10 verse 7 says, So then faith covered by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the first way you can overcome fear is by faith. The second way you can overcome fear is by experiencing his presence. Hallelujah. Experiencing is what? His presence. You see, the presence of God overcomes fear. The presence of God overcomes fear. In that same verse 4 of that Psalm 23, we are going to talk about this next week. Don't miss it. What does it say? For ye though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. David now said, I fear no evil. Why? Do you see the next thing? For thou art with me. The presence of God removes what? Fear. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible made us understand that he will never leave us nor do what? Nor forsake us. Now we can see this example in Joshua chapter 1 verse 5 to 6. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5 to 6. The Bible says, God was talking to Joshua, promising him. Now look, he said, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee. I thought somebody would say amen. Amen. Say, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Say, As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Now, Go home and read that Joshua chapter 1. You see how many times God said to Joshua, Do not be afraid, be courageous. Say, I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. God is telling somebody listening to me this morning, He will not fail you. He will not forsake you. I don't know that aspect of your life where fear is coming. Whether you have thought that all hope is lost. God will not fail you. Amen. God did not forsake you. Amen. In verse 6, be strong and of good courage. 
For unto these people shall thou divide my inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give. Genesis chapter 28, verse 15. Genesis 28, verse 15 says, And behold, I am with thee. Thought somebody will say amen to that. Amen. Now listen it again. And behold, I am with thee. And we keep thee in all places where you go. And we bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done which I have spoken of thee. This is the basis, the simple basis of us not fearing is that God is with us. Tell your neighbor, God is with me. God is with me. So whenever you are going through a lot of things, number one thing, the health of fear is that you have what? Faith. The number two thing is that you know that you are experiencing God's presence inside of you. Psalm 27 verse 1 to 3. Psalm 27 verse 1 to 3. Now listen very well. And I'm going to deal with this. Why I know that God is with me. He said, Psalm 27 verse 1 to 3. He said, the Lord is my light. I, I, I want you to be responding to me. The Lord is your light. Amen. He said, and your salvation. Amen. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He said, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fell. Do and all should encamp against me. My heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. So what, what gives David confidence in this scripture? Ten things that God, I mean David got from God. Number one, he regarded God as his light. Hallelujah. Amen. Now remember that the Bible says in John chapter 1, it said darkness, in fact in Genesis, it said darkness filled the words, the heart. In Genesis chapter 1, it said darkness filled the world, the heart. And when what, what happens? And the Spirit of God came and light what came. So wherever there is light, darkness cannot see, cannot explain, cannot come. That's the presence of God. For God is what? Is light. Number two, David said, is my salvation. Not only is he the light, he is also able to save me. Number three, he said, is my trust. It's my trust. I trust him. You know, when the presence of God, when you acknowledge that the presence of God is inside of you, fear exists because God is your light. God is your salvation. God is your trust. Even when I heard I said, God is my strength. God is my strength. He didn't stop there. He said, God is my light. That's the presence of God. God is my life. He said, it's my confidence. I cannot be afraid because it's my confidence. He said, it's my protector from the wicked. God is a protector from the wicked. No bad, no security. He said, I was, I, was, I was just trying to, to shop for, for, for insurance. For our car. And I discovered that, look, been using this car for years now. I've never had any form of major um, form of accident. Is it because I know how to drive? In fact, I don't know how to drive. God is your protector. It's your confidence. It's your protector from the wicked. It's your protector from the enemies. The Lord is your refuge from multitudes. And in verse 3 he said, the Lord is my help. experience the presence of God, this tenfold confidence comes into your life. Now because of our time, I want to move. Number three thing I can make you to do with fear is applying the word of God. Applying the word of God. And I want to tell you, God has been speaking. Tell your neighbor, God has been speaking. God has been speaking. God has been speaking. In that 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 
said, for God has not given us the spirit of what? Fear. Now that tells you from the beginning that fear is not from God. Right? God has not given you the spirit of I want you to say it with confidence. God has not given me the spirit of fear. God has not given me the spirit of fear. He said, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Three key things. Number one, of power. You have power. Say, I have power. I have power. Say, I have, I have power. What do you mean? You have access to God's power when you humble yourself. You have access to God's power when you surrender yourself to the leading of the Holy Spirit. You have access to God's power when you fear God. You have access to God's power when you feel before Him. You know, the second part of that verse says, of that verse, second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, but of love. You have love inside of you, so you can't be afraid. That's John chapter 4, verse 18. First John chapter 4, verse 18. Say, there is no fear in what? In love. Now listen to what he said. For perfect love casted out fear. Because fear are torment. So what he said, he said, he that feareth is not made in perfect love. So love and fear cannot operate in the same place. You either you love or you what? You fear. Love is a mighty force that can deal with fear. I want you to declare this morning. Say, I am loved of God. I don't hear you say, I am loved of God. That He will never leave me. And He will never forsake me. You see, when you know that you love God, and when you know that God loves you, you put all your trust in Him. Praise the name of the Lord. And that verse, and that the third part of that first Timothy, second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 is. Which says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Amen. Of a sound mind. You see, when it's talking about a sound mind, it means that you have a wise discretion. You have a self-control of yourself. You are disciplined. Your thoughts are aligning with God. For you are able to store God's word in your heart and declare it out of your mouth by faith. So, to deal with fear, we're going to use F E A R to deal with fear. The first one is faith. The second one is expression of his presence. Number three is what? Apply the word of God. And then the fourth one is don't refuse to run away from what frightens you. Don't run away from it. Instead of it, instead confront it. Confront your fear. Don't run away from it. Face the situation. Head on. Because if you don't face the situation, the situation will face you. Don't try to hide from it. Just meet it head on. Praise the Lord. Now let's conclude. Now. There's what we call the fear not vitamins. That you can be, you know, sometimes you need vitamins to, to make you to make your immune to be stronger. The fear not vitamins is that you have 365 fear notes in the scripture. So, in other words, when you have 365 days in the year, you have a daily dose of fear notes. So what I want you to be doing is that you apply this on a daily basis. So in other words, when you wake up in the morning, like you are going to wake up in the morning tomorrow, just say to yourself, I, Samuel Lam, fear not. That's for that day. Now you can look at all the scriptures, all these fear not. I will not fear evil. I will not fear disaster. I will not fear disappointment. I will not fear this thing. 
because even though they surround me, yea, though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I will fear no evil. Apply them on a daily basis. Let's rise up on our feet. Now, you know what? The challenge for the week is this. The challenge for today's, I mean, for this week is that I want you to highlight your fears. Those things that make you be afraid. Highlight them and present them to the shepherd. Tell the shepherd to crush them for you. Because in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, the Bible says, Cast all your care. And the Bible says, Cast all your fears upon him. For he what? He cares. He cares for you. I want you to now this morning look at, remember everything that is making you to be afraid this morning. And begin to cast it to God. Cast it to God. Pray to God that Lord. I know I am not I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of this thing. But Lord, I cast it to you. I cast it to you. I want you to pray. 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 Cast all your cares upon him for his cares. That thing that is making you to be afraid. That thing that is making you to be, to be, to be, to be, not to be, not to be in the presence of God for all the days of your life. Cast it upon him. Cast it upon him. Maybe your own is, is, is dying young. Maybe your own is tomorrow. Maybe your own is lack of job. Maybe your own is marriage. Maybe your own is children. Maybe your own is. It can be any form of fear. Anything that you are you are afraid of. Lay it upon God. Lay it upon Him this morning. He is here. Cast all your care upon Him. For His fear. For His care. He cares. The shepherd is here this morning. And he wants you to cast it upon Him. I want you to cry to God. Lord. As from today, every form of negative news that the devil is bringing to me, I turn it into good news. Talk to God. Talk to God this morning. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Every negative news. I want you to also talk to God this morning. Increase my faith, oh Lord. My faith, let me experience your presence. Let me experience your presence in everything that I'm doing. It is my faith. Give me the grace to apply your word. And Father, let me not run away from my fear. Talk to God, talk to God. Talk to God. He's listening to you this morning. Jesus, mighty name, we are praying. If you are listening to me this morning, you have not given your life to Jesus, you can acknowledge that the sh- Jesus is your shepherd. You will be in perpetual pain. But I want to pray for you. So if you are here this morning, you have not given your life to Jesus, or you want to rededicate your life, it is high time that you come back to the shepherd. Say after me, my shepherd. I have come back to you. I pray pray. that you uphold me. Bring me back to your fold. I have gone astray, Lord. God, bring me back. Bring me back to you. I confess my sins and I acknowledge that you are my shepherd. Take me back. I don't want to be afraid again. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. I want to pray for every one of us. Let's lift up our two hands to go. And so, Father, we thank you for your word that has given us confidence that we can we should not be afraid. Lord, is there anything that we are fearful of? I cry to you this morning, combining my faith with everybody that is listening to me this morning. And I decree in the name that is above every other name, that you replace our fear with faith in the name of Jesus Lord we replace our fear with faith in the name of Jesus we 
say it confidently like David said that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death we will fear no evil for you will be with us in the mighty name of Jesus we pray the Lord as from today fear will cease in our life thank you everlasting father in Jesus mighty name we are praying Amen. if you are listening to us and the Lord is laying it in your heart to join a church to worship the name of our church is the redeemed christian church of god and we have its branches all over the world you can find a living church that is near you or locate this redeemed christian church of god and you can also join us our worship center is 54 willows street i mean 54 victoria street in willows in Bloemfontein. you can join us we do our worship on Sundays like this from 9 a.m up to 11 and then on Wednesday from 6 p.m. You can worship with us. You can join us so that your faith can also be built. And if you're always thinking to your heart to drop the offering on your tithes, the account will be dropped in the comment section. Please do so. And as you do so, God will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we share the grace and fellowship together? With the grace, grace of, of the Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ the, the Lord love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom, we are blessed. See you next time.